Hey, hey you, yes you, see all these wonderful people right here? They are my Patreons. With the support I get from them, I can afford to do my passion as a career and bring you guys weekly videos. Want to join them? For just $1 a month, you can get videos 24 hours before anyone else. And for even higher tiers, you can get Polaroids, letters, and mystery boxes from me to you. And even fursuit parts, not to mention my eternal thanks. So what are you waiting for? Become a Patreon today via the link in the description. Thanks again, enjoy the video. Hey guys, and welcome to part three of this tutorial series. This series will be an in-depth head furring tutorial, bringing the head all the way to when we are ready to shave. So, once, so let's once again start with what we will need for this part of the tutorial. First, we will need all our pattern pieces from last video as well as the head base. We will need around a meter to a meter and a half total of high quality fur in the lengths and colors you wish to use for your head, a small amount of minky in the color you would like your nose to be, and some thread for all of the sewing we'll be doing. For our tools, we need a black sharpie to mark your fur pieces with, some good sewing scissors, a pet hair clipper with a 7F blade or a guard for 1 8 of an inch shave length, as well as an optional 10 blade or 1 16 of an inch guard, a sewing machine, a glue gun with glue sticks, and a large sewing needle for doing any hand sewing. A curved needle is definitely recommended for this. So I'm starting by taking all my pattern pieces and tracing them onto my fur, taking careful note of the marked fur direction from earlier. I have removed the stickiness from the other side of the tape by putting it on the floor and letting it pick up loose fur, but you can stick it to paper and cut it out or whatever works for you. I trace these with sticky side up. This is really important to remember so your patterns end up on the right side of the head. I also mark the number of each piece. The pieces I'm tracing right now are the areas I want this fur color in, but short. So this is areas like the main face and muzzle. So once that's all traced, I cut out the entire area without separating each piece, ready for pre-shave later. I now trace all of the pieces I want to have this color, but in the original long length. For these pieces, I cut out each individual piece as we do not need to pre-shave. I leave about half a centimeter of seam allowance. I recommend making your seam allowance as small as you are comfortable putting through your machine as it will leave you less trimming to do later. Take extra care not to trim the pile of the fur as you cut. Run the blade of the scissors up against the fabric backing of the fur. You can also cut these out with a very sharp X-Acto knife if you prefer. Now it's time to trace the red fur I would like to have short. And once again, separate the entire area from the bolt and set aside for pre-shave. And all our lovely red pieces we wish to keep long. You'll notice I flip one piece here and that is one of the pieces for the fabric for the neck, which we only taped half of. So it will need to be flipped and traced a second time to complete the neck. Now begins my least favorite part of this process, the shaving. This is a pre-shave of all our pieces we will want to keep short. So I lay my fabric out flat, oil my clipper blades, put on my respirator, and my video jumps to me shaving the red. That's helpful, thank you camera. But you guys can see what I do here. I just work on taking off as much of the pile as I need to with my 10 blade here. A 7F would also work fine. I do straight cuts and then clean up and then shave on the diagonal. If you're still not 100% satisfied, you can shave on the other diagonal and then straight again to really tidy it up. After the first shave pass, I'm really only taking off tiny, tiny amounts of pile just to clean it up. So try to use an even pressure when you shave, but don't press so hard you cut to the backing. Brushing it out between passes also helps a whole lot. Now we cut out our pieces that we have pre-shaved. Whilst I'm doing that, I'll share with you guys some more tips for shaving. Not rushing is crucial to a clean shave. If you rush into it, you will slip up and cut something way too short. This pre-shave step can help and whilst you don't need to get it buzz cut short, a good length similar to beaver fake fur is what you're aiming for, so around a quarter to a half inch. Now that we have all the fur cut out, we can begin sewing it all together. I start with the muzzle, reassembling the piece along all of the darts. I'm using my longest straight stitch for this. Be sure to back stitch at the start and end of every seam. Once I have it sewn, I give out a good brush before testing the fit on the head to see how accurate my patterning was. 
I then realize I forgot to cut out the fabric for the nose, so I grab some black minky and trace and cut my three nose pieces. I then reassemble these three pieces to form our big boobable nose. I then pin it into the nose hole and sew around the edge, making sure it's oriented properly. Now I'm working on reassembling the cheek pieces. I sew the darts closed in each and brush them out. Then attach the lower jowl piece to the main cheek piece for each. Brush. Attach the cheeks to the muzzle and brush again. If you're ever confused at how the pieces go back together, have a look at the photos you took in the previous tutorial. I even recommend taking a small video when it's patterned to help you see how each piece can go together. I sewed the bottom jaw piece onto the face fur and do a quick trim up of all the threads before testing the fit on the head again. I now work on assembling the brow piece by first sewing his eyebrows into the main piece. Small markings like this I will often recommend doing by hand as they can be a bit tricky um, on your machine if you don't have the practice. I will often hand sew small markings that have straight edges on the machine and hand sew small markings with curves like spots. Now we repeat the same with the other eyebrow. And then I attach the brow piece to the muzzle and cheeks. Now I'm working on adding the tufts of fur along the top of the head like we patterned earlier. These bits of fur really give, make the head pop by giving it a bit more depth. I now sew the little triangles for the cheek poofs and attach to the cheek pieces, repeating for the other side. Now we start working on the back of the head by first sewing the darts closed and then attaching the long back cheek pieces to it as well. Once we have the back of the head done, I attach it to only one side of the front half of the face, leaving the other side open. Now it's time for the ears. I sew the inner ear pieces together, both the short and the inner ear tufts. And then I reassemble the darts on the back of the ear and then attach the inner and outer pieces together. It can be a bit of a tricky seam, but take your time with it and you should be fine.
Now that the ears are done, we can work on assembling all of our neck pieces, sewing each side together before connecting them at the front. I attach the front of the ears to the front of the face, leaving the back open for easy assembly. We try to sew as much of it together as we can before assembly, but we don't want to make it overly difficult for ourselves either. Next we attach the neck by lining up the front centre of the neck with the middle of the base of the bottom jaw piece. Pin and sew the shorter side of that and trim off the excess neck to reattach on the opposite side of the neck. We do this because our head fur is split down the side rather than down the front and we want to have as few seams as possible. Once reattached we can finish sewing the rest of the neck to the base. Now it is time to prep the fur for gluing. I start by going around and trimming all of the seams as short as I can without having to worry about the seam coming undone and you'll notice me re-sewing where I cut a bit too deep and tore the seam. Now we want to start sewing the fur onto the mouth lining. I line up where I need to start sewing by placing the fur on the head and rolling it off the face. Working from the center out, I sew along each side of the mouth with a curved needle. The curved needle allows you to get into the really hard to reach places a lot easier. I highly recommend using one. Sewing this seam closed will help get a cleaner finish on the mouth area overall. It can be a bit tricky when you get into the corners of the mouth, so don't be afraid to pull on the foam a bit to get in there. And now we are repeating the process on the bottom jaw. Make sure you get as close as you can to your inner headlining. Now we are ready for glue. I work section by section here, starting from the lower part of the muzzle as I work, I position the fur as it dries, as if I were gluing the entire face. This makes sure everything can reach where it needs to. I also rub the area I glue to feel for any folds in the fabric that I need to smooth out. I put a bit of stuffing in the nose to puff it out a bit once it's secured in place and glue the top half of the muzzle on. Now I work on the cheek areas by covering an area with glue and rolling the fabric into place. With this section, there are two spots you really want to pay attention to, and those are the jowl or the smile area and the muzzle. Really push the fabric into those little, little cavities as it dries. We want the fur to sit there properly so it can have the clear shape at the end. Now we work up the front of the face between the eyes. and then along each side of the face. Make sure you put glue all the way to the base of the ears. Now we cover the front of the ears in glue, press the fabric into place and flip the rest of the ear fur over the top and allow it to dry. You can also add glue to the back of the ears as well at this point. I'm now working on trimming around each eyepiece. 
I often end up with excess in this area so I trim it and glue the raw edges slightly out from the edge of our iframes. Now it's time to sew all our open seams closed, ready for the shave. So I'm once again using my curved needle with some upholstery thread or bonded nylon thread to work my way around the seams on the head. I'm using a Muppet stitch for this and I'll put up a little diagram showing exactly how that stitch works. It's a slightly modified ladder stitch used to hide seams. I also recommend tying the thread off every so often for extra durability in that stitch. When I get to the neck, I sew to a blanket stitch as I find it to be a bit more durable than the Muppet stitch. And there we go, Jasper is ready for his big finish. Join me next time for the final episode in this tutorial series where we do our final shave and give him all his finishing touches. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the replies to the pinned comment and I may answer them in the next Q&A video for this section of the tutorial. See you then. Bye guys.